In this tutorial, I'll take you through creating photorealistic renderings in Keyshot from exported gravity sketches. A best practice regarding exporting your geometry for rendering is to streamline your materialization. What I mean by this is if you use the same color on certain parts of your model, you won't have to relink your material to all those different components. So for example, the outsole on the shoe has a lot of different geometry, a lot of separate bodies. But because they're all blue as they're exported from Gravity Sketch, they will all be linked materials when I export into Blender or Keyshot. For example, the orange eyelet and the orange heel pull tab are going to be the same material. To get ready to export, I'll press the blue menu button, I'll go to save, I'll go to export, and here for Keyshot, I'm going to choose FBX, meters, Y, YZ, keep this on Y, go to split, make this single sided, make it a render. We're not going into Keyshot to continue to control our mesh. For example, in Rhino, you can continue to edit, but in Keyshot, we're just trying to render. And here, we'll just make it mesh data. When we're ready, we can save it to local or the landing pad and press the blue check to export. Once you've opened Keyshot, go to import in the bottom right corner. And to find the file, go to documents, gravity sketch, and exported sketches. From here, click on the file that we just exported from gravity sketch and click open. Go to import. And now it'll populate in the main window behind this pop-up. When you import your model into the scene, you may be frustrated because as you orbit, it's not in the center of your scene. You can orbit by left clicking, zoom with the mouse wheel, and also pan with the mouse wheel by holding it down. Now to get the model in the center of the scene, go down here to the project menu, left click, and then down here go to position. Translation, put zero, zero, zero in, and press enter. And you can also press the move tool if you'd like to move it more specifically with the gizmo. So if we want a slight tilt, we can pull on this and use these axes to position it back so we get a cool angle of the shoe. You can always know where you are relative to the ground with the shadows turned on. Now, press the green check to improve the general lighting of our environment, we can use HDRIs. If we go to environment, this is the original environment Keyshot provides us. And here's one that I've downloaded from hdrihaven.com. If I go to my folder where I'm working from and just take the HDRI, drag it and drop it into the scene, we can see that we have three distinct HDRIs to work from. These two are downloaded and you can see this one is super bright. So if we go to adjustments, brightness, and we turn this to 0.5, let's say, we can already see how much clearer and much easier it is to approach our product. Finally, to better understand the HDRI, we can press the button next to lighting environment on the right hand side. This will let us see the JPEG that the HDRI was created from. When looking at the final model, we can check out by pressing scene and left clicking on any material. You have to be in scene for this to work. Once you've got it, let's say let's check out this fuzz material. Go over here, right click, Go to Material and Edit Material Graph. You can see the material graph that I used to create this material. And for example, with Fuzz, there's a bunch of great tutorials on YouTube explaining how you can use it to create a more three-dimensional piece of suede or leather. X out of this. And now if we want to see the rest of it, a great way to start or kind of a position that you can use to orient yourself regarding materials is all of these over here in the Material menu. If we go to cloth and leather and choose this leather, for example, that is how I created the leather on this toe cap and over here on the lateral and medial. 
If I drag and drop, it's one of the easiest ways to produce new materials in all of CAD. Again, I can just drag and drop. And because it's all the same color, the material will snap to all of the bodies within the family. From here, we can go into edit by selecting it, going to edit material or edit material graph. And we can check it out with labels, textures, and properties, as well as diffuse and bumps. If you're confused about these purple maps, these are called normal maps, and you can search them on Google to give your material more character. To begin applying materials to our file, you can see that I've already applied a slight texture to the blue outsole. What I've done is you can select on the material, and over here in the project tab, you can right click, go to material, and edit material. Because all these materials are the same color, they're all going to be edited the same way. So if we go to textures, go to bump, click the checkbox, and then import our bump, we can see that it applies itself to the geometry. And notice it's applied to everything that's the same color as the midsole. This is too big, so what we can do is regarding the texture, we can bring it down. So let's try and make it half the size it is right now. And you can see that these circles have shrunk. If we set it at 0.05, they should be a lot smaller, but still visible. And you go about the shoe by doing that to pretty much all of the materials. But like I said, everything that's the same color will be applied at the same time, thanks to what we did in Gravity Sketch. Finally, if you'd like to save a material, you can come up here and click Save. This will let you apply the material to new parts of geometry in the future.